Hockey. It's always been our game, our passion. From its earliest days, strong personalities and philosophies battled to define not only how the game would be played, but who would play it. In a great game, we meet the hockey heroes and hard-boiled businessmen who built the sport, watch the rise and fall of hockey dynasties, and discover how big money has driven the game from its earliest days. Change was ushered in when John Ross Robertson was elected president of the Ontario Hockey Association. He ruled with an iron fist and was a fierce defender of amateurism. Robertson's conflicts with professionals would define hockey's development in Canada for years to come. When OHA All-Star Bruce Ridpath Thor Riddy was accused of professionalism and thrown out, he announced that he was founding the city's first pro hockey club, the Toronto Professionals. And there was no one better suited to manage this newly found team than Alexander Milne, then manager of Toronto's Mutual Street Rink. Milne's sights were always set on one thing, the Stanley Cup. He knew that in order to get there, Toronto needed a big league team with a big league arena. Milne recruited Hockey Hall of Famer Newsy Lalonde, one of the earliest players to exploit the opportunities of professional hockey, playing leagues and owners off of each other to his own financial advantage. As a result, Newsy was consistently the highest paid, often the highest scoring performer in the business. The dream of bringing the Stanley Cup to Toronto became a reality in 1914. In a smoke-filled arena, the Toronto Blue Shirts faced off against the Montreal Canadiens in a tense two-game showdown. Against the fanatical opposition of amateur hockey leaders, these Canadiens and forgotten Leafs would make history and the game would be changed forever.